Welcome to the second part of the NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series Season 4 World Tour. Our second stop in the Canadian Tour heads over to 349 for the running of the Turn of Death 500. You know why this race is called the Turn of Death 500. And there you see the turn of death. They're going to be starting off that where you never know who's going to be the next victim. And it's the most unpredictable road course ever. Ever. You're going to see who becomes the victim and who will survive. We're about to find out. On the poll today, it is the 15 of Nick Parasols. On the outside is the 66, Devin Whitston. Starting third is the 7, Kyle Sanoski. And fourth is the 16, Billy Bishop. 5th is the 25 of Alex Ragow, and 6th is the 55 Ethan Hamill. Starting 7th is the 70 of Chris Harley, and 8th is the 32 Dylan Young. Starting 9th is the 87 Zach Robinson, and rounding out the top 10, the 51 of Austin Geip. Oh, and I forgot to mention Sanoski, uh, and this weekend he won the Arca, he won the Caterpillar Arca Series in the NNSCRA, the NNSCRA Arca Series, um, from Trent the Hedges channel, and a tiebreak over... I think it was Dylan, uh, Justin Williams over t Justin Williams. A lot of drivers won. There were a lot of tiebreaker uh, championship races in the over the weekend to have you determined by tiebreaker. I hope this race will be determined by tiebreaker, but I've doubted. But well, it would be really unbelievable if it happened like that. And Abby Sachs, who just got his third one of the season at Montreal, will start in 32nd. He's going to have to work his way up to get that fourth win of the season. And, um, yeah, that's pretty. Pichu starting in the final spot. But, well, you win some, you lose some. Anyway, without further ado, let's hear those famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines! And the cars are rolling off the track. There you see the turn of death in all its glory. It will it will hurt someone's it will hurt many drivers' race feelings today. I can tell you that. Here we go. Parasols and Wilson Whitson leading us to the green flag. Twenty laps of death. Yeah, twenty laps. So it's going to be twice the fun here. Here we go. It's going to be fun. As we see the pace car just got out of the track. And our second stop at the Canadian Tour of the NASCAR Pokemon Cup Series Season 4 World Tour is underway at the Green Flag Waves. Here we go. The first portion of the course is like the road is the is the um road portion is the road portion of the course where you see the mountain portion. It's like topsy turns. There you see that little hill that could actually cause wrecks. They're though rare. They're rare. Other wrecks, other wrecks that happen uh, that aren't from the turn of death are rare at this track, but they're still occasionally. There you see the, the uh, mud po to the um, road portion of the course. There you see the mountain. They head up over to the um, mountainside. They climb up and then they climb down. They turn left and they turn right. Here they come. They're going to go down. And this is where the street portion of the course meets. The road portion. This is where they head to the street portion. Where we face off against the turn of death near the Petrol Canada gas station. Here we go, the street portion of the course is up, and let's see our first meeting with the Turn of Death today. Here we go, it's Nick Parasols versus the Turn of Death. And wow, he got through cleanly. Wow, oh no, no one else got through cleanly, there was a big pile up in the back. Marshall Rich. I think Rich was the only victim of the turn, and the caution's out for the first time today. The only victim of the turn of death in that lap was Marshall Rich. We'll get back to the strike Nick Parasol's leads. Wow, I thought we were going to have our first wreck happen with the leaders, but wow, of all people, it was Marshall, it had to be Marshall Rich. 
That was the first victim of the turn of death. Here it is again trying to pass the newly reinstated Mark Matthews in Austin. Oh no, wait a minute. There you see some other driver spinning in the turn of death as well. But he saved it. But there you see Rich couldn't save it. And he spins in the turn. Tough day. Tough break. Let's go back to the 34 Scott Ferguson in just a second race of the season. And it's not off to a great start for the team. Gets into Luke Walker. Try to save it. He does save it. What a save by the 34. And he gets a little piece of Alan Smith though. But he did save it nevertheless. Austin, Austin LaPlante right there. LaPlante and Mark Matthews were just reinstated. They got back to racing today after serving their one race suspension from Montreal for, spo for their spoilers, for spoilers on their earlier races. So they're back in action here today. Not off to a great start, and Jacob Lawler, I think, had some little bit of problems there, but I don't know. And that's pretty much it. I guess Rich was the only one that had big damage from that turn. After all, he was the first victim of the turn of death. But still a long way, a long way to go, and still it's anybody's race. Nick Parasol's the leader, then it's Devin Whitston, Kyle Sanoski, Billy Bishop, and Alex Ragow in the top five. If Sanoski can hold on to a top five finish, he might even get the points lead at the end of this race. Points leader Ryan Acosta is currently running in 36th. Not a good day for him. So if Sanoski can survive the turn of death for 17 more laps, more agonizing laps, he could actually take the points lead. We'll have to see. You never know what happens in the turn of death. So our second meeting with the turn of death will be on this lap. And Nick Parasols or maybe even someone else could be the next victim. We have to see. Here we go. The green flag waves again here at 349. Right now, it's right on uh, really a little bit clean off the turn as expected. That is a big little bit of a hill, and there comes the um, road portion as you see they're going to the carousel. And there you see going uphill, back uphill, and there you see them, they're going to be going downhill after at this turn, and they'll be heading to the street portion to face off once again with the turn of death. Last time, Nick Parasols perfectly mastered the turn. Will this be the case here on this lap? And if Parasols doesn't make it, if it Parasol does make it, the turn of death can always get another victim. But here we go, our second meeting with the turn of death. And that went through perfectly. Wow! It happens seems that the leaders have navigated through this perfectly and I think the turn of death might have just gobbled up another victim I have to see yep there are two victims Dylan Young and Rod Houston they were and Daniel Day and Gene Sanford on Pier Road I wonder what happened to them caution came out we gotta check out what happened oh spin out oh a flip someone just flipped over Scott Ferguson down below there you see there's the 19 as well was there another wreck after the turn of death I have to know there was smoke behind them I don't know what happened something went wrong on the after the turn of death I don't know I'm just speechless I'm really, I'm just speechless right now, folks. Yep, it happened right just before they were going to hit the start-finish line. Mark Matthews clips gets clipped. There you see Mark Matthews 
gets clipped by Alan Smith on the, on the final turn, and then the 19, he gets a big hit on the pit window, and the 34, Scott Ferguson, flipped him over. And I'm surprised no one else got involved. Everyone else made it through. Oh, it got clipped by Mark Matthews. And then the 19 goes for a spin and a flip. The 34 hit him hard. Wow. Again, like I said, cautions outside the turn of death are rare in 349 and we just saw another one today let's go on board with Alan Smith now I meant Scott Ferguson now let's go on board with David Rochester for oh yeah that was the driver who left Let's go on board with Alan Smith. He didn't... He sure welcomed Mark Matthews back to the PCS all right with this. Not the welcome back if he wanted from a rival, but nevertheless, here's an onboard camera pin. Now let's go on board with Sarah Yitzhong. Oh, I think she might have avoided that. Wow. I'm not sure how she avoided all that. And same goes for Jonathan Thoman. Wow, he avoided all this. Oh no, he got a little bit of damage. He got a little bit of side damage. But uh, if it was a little better, it would have been great. There you see also Tim Fraley gets a piece as well. And Kyle Beck, what a... S no, I meant to say, I think Kyle Beck was the one that made the great save. Yes, it was. Kyle Beck avoided all the damage. Whoa! Kyle Beck, what a save for the 20 machine. Avoided everything. Now let's get to the real reason we're under caution. Uh, now that wreck has been complete. Oh, wow. We just saw yet another one. Another rare wreck outside the turn of death. There you see Gene Sanford going downhill on the mountain and was about to approach the carousel. And then Daniel Day clips the 54 of Charles Roberts and forces Sanfer uphill. And if she almost went into the water, believe it or not. But Sanfer got stuck uphill and could not get out. That was mud right there, folks. Let's go on board. Yeah, tough break for the 60 there. And now we'll see Daniel Day. How did he end up on pit road? Here they come towards the turn of death. This was before the turn of death. Let's see how the turn of death rea uh, treated Daniel Day. Yeah, yeah, that's... I guess the turn of death wasn't too happy that Daniel Day forced Sanford uphill. And so... He got payback on the 8, like this. Guess the turn of death gods weren't too happy with the um, wreck with Gene Sanfer, and they repaid him well. <laughs> oh yeah, John McNamara, or I think it might have been John McNamara that he didn't li uh, that didn't like the wreck, and he nudged him towards, right there, McNamara just nudged him out, and Day spun out.
Now let's see what happened to Dylan. Now let, now we're about to see the best part of the caution. Rod Houston, Dylan Young, and the turn of death. There you see Young gets into Houston on the turn and then spins him out towards the gas station. On the gas station he landed, by the way. And Young hits the wall, clips the trailer, and he has to make it through by himself. And I apologize for the fast cuts, but... <laughs> Action just comes at you fast, then. It's hard to catch up. Oh, wow, we're under green. My goodness, was this a race to remember? Even without the leaders wrecking, it still had some... It, had, it still had a ton of wrecks. Probably more than it should have. And it was on outside the turn of death. It's very rare we had two wrecks outside the turn of death that's incredible that's got to be incredible that's just amazing and the leaders have chosen to pit it's time for the leaders to get pit stops oh whoa 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 makoto iguchi oh spin a spin on pit road for makoto iguchi i guess they had some outrage over a lot of the drivers they believed she caused the wreck no, it was... Oh, she... Oh, Yitzhak was not happy with the 77 for whatever reason and just spun her. Don't know what that was about, but wow. That's gotta hurt. Alan Smith, I think... No, Dylan Young, he's still up on the track. I think everyone else pitted. Yeah, everyone else pitted. Here they come towards pit road. We'll see who comes out first. And they all took their pit road simultaneously. The top six of the starting position are still on track. But who will come out first? That's the question. It looks like I could see one driver out first. And I think it is Angel Navarro. Wow. Angel Navarro came out of pit road first. That might have been a quick stop. He went from ninth. He was ninth before. And now he's back in the lead. What a pit stop for the 92 machine. But I don't know if they're going to give Alan Smith the lead. He stayed out. Remember last time in Montreal, Smith stayed out under the final caution period. And he's going to be 14th. So I think he might be the leader, believe it or not. So, yeah. Remember last time in Montreal where Alan Smith stayed out with three to go when everyone else pitted under the final caution? And yeah, Smith didn't have enough fuel to finish the race and unfortunately on the final turn he gave up the he had to give up the win to Avi Sachs on that race, Montreal. But this time he's looking for better days as he might be the leader heading into the caution to the green flag. And Angel Navarre will follow in second. So what a stunning twist here. Green flag waves. And it is Alan Smith the lead. Wow. But will it hold on? But will he hold on to the lead? Wow, it's unusual to see Alan Smith stayed out. He was the only lead, lead lap car to stay out under caution. And he's the leader. Now he's looking for redemption for losing that race in Montreal on the final turn. Angel Navarro with a fast pit stop went from 9th to 2nd. And that pit stop, and Nick Parasols, who was the leader before and during the caution period, drops to 3rd. The last two times we've been to the turn of death under green, the leaders, well perfectly navigated it. It's like they knew they were going to face the turn of death. But we're about to see the, if the third time is the charm for these guys as we're about to witness the turn of death. And look at Navarro trying to make a move on Smith already, but we'll have to wait until after the turn of death to make it. Here they come. No, and look at Smith go high. Navarro trying to take advantage. Both of them navigated through that perfectly. And there you see Navarro taking it. Angel Navarro used the turn of death to his advantage. Here he comes, but Smith trying to get up bottom line, and Navarro clears the 33. 
Nice move by the 92 machine to get the lead away as the caution waves again. Let's see what happened behind them. It might have involved Luke Walker and Leia Walker. Yep. Th Who were the victims this time in the turn of death? Both Walkers and Dustin Ray. There you see Leia not helping his teammate, spinning his teammate rather, and Dustin Ray got clipped by Luke. And then Leia and Luke try to save it and they spin out as well. Wow, sibling robbery going on in the turn of death. Not the right time to do so, but <laughs> wow, it's pretty funny. Nevertheless, pretty funny. And Alan Smith is pitting. He was the only driver on the lead lap to stay out from the last caution period. So he's going to take his fuel and tires, and there'll be 11 to go when we get back under green. Angel Navarro, the leader, and... I don't know what's going on. Navarro and Paracels have problems just before the green. They're pitting just before the green flag waves, giving the lead to Devin Whitston. I don't understand why they're doing this, but wow. That's shocking. Don't understand why they're doing this under the green just before the green waves. Don't know if that's part of their strategy. A lot of others are pitting just before the green. Wow. I'm stunned. Green flag is out for Devin Winston. I can't believe what just happened, folks. Wow. And guess who's in second now? Alex Ragow. He just made a move on Billy Bishop. Or at least he's trying to make a move on Billy Bishop. And wow, I don't know how Stephen Polo III lost his front... 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 His front... His front bender, and he lost. He lost his front bender. He still went. He's still in the top five. Yeah, he lost his front. He lost his front hood somehow in a in the turn of death around someone, and he's running in fifth. Wow, that's impressive. The last three times, none of the leaders got involved in the turn of death. We're about to see our fourth round of the turn of death, and will the turn of death finally strike the leaders? We will see. Here they come to the street portion. Marshall Race is going to go for fourth. Meanwhile, we're going to go see the turn of death. And they nav- Oh no, Alex Rango spins! One driver spins! That was Marshall Race! That was Marshall Rich, I mean. Marshall Rich spun out behind them. Yeah, Marshall Rich was the victim of the turn of death, and it gobbles up another victim. And the caution's out. Might have been a wreck behind them, I am not sure. But Devin Whitston leads. Oh my goodness. Was that a unexpected turn? I think it might have happened before we got to the turn of death because this caution period was a little long. Oh, wow. wow. Here's what happened. Dylan Young gets too loose on the turn right here trying to avoid a wreck, I think, because I see smoke behind them. He was trying to avoid a wreck just, and he just slipped up on the turn. What? What happened exactly? Oh, there was a big pile up on that turn. It seems that the turn of death didn't really take over the race. It seemed the other turns were trying to show the spotlight on the wrecks. Austin Geip and Kyle Beck all just could not avoid it. Sarah Yitzong, Charles Roberts, Jacob Lawler got too loose on that curve. That was a dangerous curve. Wait, I, oh, wait a minute, Ethan Hamill spun by Pichu. That might have been the real reason the caution came out. So we've had more wrecks on other turns than the turn of death th itself this year. Wow! So it's not just the turn of death anymore that's causing all these wrecks. 
My goodness, they were all too aggressive to win this race. And we did see earlier Marshall Rich got too loose on the turn. He had to pay the price. Spinning on the turn. Oh my goodness. Incredible, right? Just incredible. Wow. It just was a it's just an amazing race throughout, folks. And Pollard had a pit, and so did the 40. I'm not sure if the leaders are gonna do the same. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Has this been one of the most unpredictable races ever? Even with the turn of death not taking out the leaders, it's still unpredictable anyway. Ethan Hamill, George Wark, John McNamara, Rod Houston, David Rochester, Scott Ferguson, and Daniel Day are done for the night. Gene Sanford is a lap down. I'm not sure about her, but wow. So it's been the other turns I've been on the spotlight today, and not just the turn of death. Could we still see a leader wreck out on the turn of death? I hope so. And now I'm not surprised the top five decided to pit. Top six pitted. Just before the green flag. Not surprised. And guess who's back in the lead? Alan Smith. Wow. The world just comes around at you, doesn't it? It's a small world after all. Alan Smith is still the leader, is now the leader. Makoto Iguchi moved to second. And now we're about to get under green. Eight to go, folks, here at 349. As Alan Smith, the leader, Leia Walker, she was involved in the turn of death two cautions ago, and somehow she's since second. What a comeback for the 10. And what a comeback for loop two. At least the victims of three of the turn of death are actually in the top ten. Wow! It looks like it seems that these drivers have pretty much conquered the turn of death. That's something we have never seen ever. That's never happened. That everyone, almost everyone, conquered the turn of death in some form. It looks like the turn of death might not be as powerful as as previous as it we as we thought it was. But wait a minute, we still got to deal with it. We still have to face off against it again as Alan Smith is the next driver to face off against the turn of death. Here he comes to street portion. Will it have any surprises left? No surprise, as you see the leader just made it through easily. Wow, the turn of death has not been as powerful as previously. Wow, it didn't even give up quite a good fight. The turn of death has lately have not given a good fight to Alan Smith, and Smith is using it to his advantage. Oh no, a big pile up in the mess behind them. Leia Walker spins, the caution is out. And once again, the caution came out on a wreck that did not happen in the turn of death. It's still a wreck fest, but just not the wreck fest we thought we'd see. Nick Parasils gets into Leia. I don't know, I think she was a little fear... Oh, 15 was a little heated against Leia and then dumped her into pit road. I don't know what happened, but nevertheless... Wow, I just can't believe it. My goodness, have wow, has this been one of the most interesting interesting races I've ever done, honestly. I and it's one of the most interesting. I cannot believe it. The turn of death has not really showed its spark. It hasn't really done much to the leaders. <laughs> The leaders have just conquered it all. I think they know exactly how to conquer it now. They are experts now at the turn of death. There's still five laps to go, though. You never know what happens, but... I don't know if the turn of death still has any of its death left. I don't know if the turn of death still had its, has any of its spark left, but 349 still has its tricks up its sleeve. 
And Smith is not pitting again. This time he's going to stay out and take the lead. Five laps to go at 349. Has this been a wild and wacky race? And it wasn't the one we ex it wasn't how it was expected to set up. Almost like Montreal, we expected the S curves in Montreal to cause the most wrecks, but we had another turn that was just after the hard turn that caused the most wrecks, even probably all of the wrecks that was caused back there. Anyway, the green's out. And Angel Navarro wasting no time for second, and he just zoomed by him for second. Zoomed by Gucci for second. Harrisil's trying to get back up on top. He hasn't been on top since early in the race. Ever since Angel Navarro came out first on pit road. And Alan Smith stayed out. I guess this turn I guess that stay out might have helped him a lot in the in the um, turns of the long run. So we'll see if it gets it pays off, but he'll have to survive the turn of death for five more laps. And we still don't have a wreck caution yet, but we have to keep our eyes open. They're going downhill. Navarro has a good run against Smith. He could actually contest Smith in a couple more laps if we get back under green. If we stay green. Here we go. The street portion of the course. And we're about to witness the turn of death. Here we go. Turn of death time. And no way! The leader got through again and there's another wreck behind them! Kyle Sinoski was the next victim! It just took Kyle Sinoski away! And the caution's out again. There'll be four to go when they hit it. And there'll be a final two lap dash to the finish after this. Smith leads! Let's just get back and see what happened to Kyle Sinoski in the turn of death. Oh, the sevens, the two seven drivers got together in the turn of death. Makoto Iguchi, a little bit of damage with the seven, and then the 14 gets a piece of the 77, and the seven spins out. I don't know if that was truly a spin, but nevertheless, it caused the caution, and I guess, yeah, I guess so. So, probably this probably will be the last time we'll face off against the turn of death. One more time with two laps to go. And if we get another caution before the white flag waves, the race is over right off the bat. Unless if anyone else pits under the caution period. We've seen that happen before many times. And it could happen to them again. So I'm not counting that I'm not counting out that possibility too. So here we go. We're going to get back under green with two laps to go. If we get a caution under the white flag lap, before we hit the white flag, if we get a caution, the race is over. If we don't have a caution, if we get a caution on the final lap, on the final lap, we'll race it to the line. But if we hit it before the final lap, the race is over. Alan Smith, the leader, with two to go, and he'll battle against the... 349 for at least one more time. Who will survive 349 and get the win at that the big against the turn of death? Everyone has been na the leaders have navigated through this perfectly, but will it be the case again? They'll have to do it one at least one more time if we don't get a caution before the white flag lap. Here we go, two to go at 349 as the green flag is out. And Angel Navarro trying to get the lead away from Smith right off the first turn. At least it looked like it was. Ryan Acosta getting gaining ground. He will have the points lead for another day. Nick Parasil's moving to second, trying desperately to get a position against Navarro. Pichu in contention as well for top five. Pichu trying to help Parasil. No, he's trying to make his own move. 
And all this is benefiting Alan Smith in the long run. But he'll have to face the turn of death one more time. No caution yet. They're going downhill. Navarro was able to hold on second. Pichu trying to move to third. Nick Parasol trying to make a move. Here he comes. Turn of death. One more battle against with him and Alan Smith. This is for possibly the win if we don't get a caution. And perfect navigation. And that's going to be it for him. For the turn of death. I think it might have run out of, I think the turn of death might have ran out of steam. Or did it? Billy Bishop spins one other spin and the caution is out and we knew it. The race is over. That's it. And Alan Smith has just conquered the turn of death and he'll lead to the caution and the white flag. They were victims on the final turn of death um, battle of the race. Devin Whitston was one of them. And Billy Bishop was another one of them. And Avi Sachs, no, Kyle Beck was another one of them. It was a big wreck behind them. Kyle Beck and Devin Whitston spun, and then Charles Roberts gets too much a piece of it. Le Ooh, Luke, how did he avoid that? Wow. P and Billy Bishop gets a piece as well. Wow. Mason won a piece as well. Wow! Just an amazing race, folks. The turn of death was never a factor for any of these leaders. All the way. It caused a lot of other middle cars to wreck out, but nevertheless, the leaders were never affected by it. Little mix-up back there, but nevertheless, Alan Smith, if he doesn't pin on the final lap like he did in Montreal, He's going to get his win at a Canadian track. No, he will not pit. Not this time. He learned his lesson. And off the... Wait. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. He did it again. He did it again. Al Smith pitted on the final turn again. Angel Navarro has just won it at 3.49. Alan Smith did it again. For the second race in a row, he pitted on the final turn! Alan Smith for the second race in a row! He lost it on a mistake! I cannot believe it! I never thought this would happen twice in a row! Oh man, that is just amazing! Alan Smith! He did it in Montreal. He's did it again at 349. Wow. The second race in a row. He lost it. He couldn't get to pit road. He couldn't even make it to pit road. Wow. Angel Navarro has just won this race at 349. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. It had one final trick up its sleeve. Alan Smith, wow, I guess the turn of death jinxed it. It had one more trick up its like <laughs> Wow. Oh my goodness. Alan Smith has just lost yet another race. On a final turn, final lap, under caution mistake. Angel Navarro wins it here. He gets his first ever Pokemon Cup Series win. Though not in the way he wanted it to be, but he'll take it anyway. Ryan Acosta gets his best finish of the season. The points leader gets a second place finish. He keeps his points lead. Nick Parasol will finish in third. Pichu in fourth. Rohit Vedarbu fifth. Zach Robinson sixth. Chris Harley seventh. James Shelley eighth. John Raddick in ninth. And Jacob Lawler tenth. And here's the rest of the field. And they ruled um, Alan Smith in 18th. For the second race in a row, Alan Smith pitted on the final turn, on the final lap. He didn't even make it to pit road. He was trying to redeem himself and it happened again. Wow, can you believe it? 
He has lost two races in a row like that. I have never seen any driver go through so much heartbreak in a season. This is the moment he slowed down. He didn't even make it. And, his, and that win slipped him again. He let, he let another win slip through his fingers. Wow, that was just tough. That was real tough to lose it. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Angel Navarro wins at 349 after Alan Smith's disastrous mistake on the final turn. I'm just stunned. And let's look at the point standings. Ryan Acosta extends his points lead with his best finish of second this season. That's just his second top five this season. I'm surprised. Kostanowski, 104 points behind. He has extended the points lead. James Shelley, third. Austin LaPlante, fourth. Robinson, fifth. Dustin Ray, sixth. Pichu, seventh. Abby Sachs, eighth. Ethan Hamill, ninth. And Marshall Rich in tenth. Navarro's win moves him up to 19. 21st and 22nd are Gene Sanford and David Rochester. 23rd and below are on your screen. And wow, he was 38th in the points. Alan Smith would have really needed those wins to get back on track. And if you're wondering, 43rd Scott Ferguson. He is just just his second race, just to let you know. So yeah. Wow, I cannot believe that Alan Smith went through heartbreak twice in a row. First at Montreal, he was one turn away, and then he ran out of fuel and gave the win Abby Sachs. And now at 349, some kind of a problem happened on the final turn, and he didn't even make it to pit road. He slowed down in the middle of the track and gave the win to Angel Navarro. Oh my goodness, that is just really tough. That is, I have never seen a driver go through so much heartbreak twice in a row. Well, Alan Smith will have a shot at redemption, redemption, and most sport for Mr. NASCAR JG 24's Phillips 500, our third stop in the Canadian Tour of the World Tour. And then the next two will be at Pig Stadium for the second Pigs Grand Slam race, and Ontario. Of course, Ontario, California, Ontario, Canada, whatever. It's still part of Canada somewhat. I'll make uh, it, it. It will count anyway. So that's all from here at 3:49. The turn of death didn't really do much, but well, it still had its magic up its sleeve at the end, as you saw earlier. Anyway, we'll see you next race at Mosport. I am going to take. I'm going to have to catch my breath right now. And oh boy, <laughs> wow. And be sure to look out for the Uncanny Valley, the 5th anniversary special coming up this week on Pichu London. And then it'll be up on TA2 whenever I get the over 15 minute gift back on that channel, if I do get it back. So, um, see you guys later.